Hello there. My name is Phil Lamar, and I want to welcome you to the 32nd annual Will Eisner Comic Industry Award Show. The Eisners. Now, as most of you probably know, normally these awards are presented in a great big ceremony in the Hilton Ballroom in San Diego with uh, all sorts of presenters and most of the recipients on hand. Now, obviously, we're not doing that this year, which is sort of a bummer that we can't be together in person to celebrate all the wonderful works and the creators that these awards usually highlight. But we're still highlighting their work and we're still celebrating them. We're just not doing it together. And one upside is there's probably a lot more people watching this virtual ceremony than we could fit in the ballroom. And you don't have to worry about dressing up. Although for me, that's, that's sort of a downside. There's nothing I love more than watching, you know, comic book people who spend the vast majority of their time alone in a room, get all dressed up. Actually, here's an idea. Why don't the winners, once they get their Eisner Awards, get dressed up and put up a little video, you know, saying their award acceptance speech. You know, I think we all would love to hear what it was that inspired the work or who it is that you'd like to thank. And just because we can't be together doesn't mean we have to miss out on that. See, we're still gonna have the Eisner Awards. They will just be broken up and spread out all over the internet. The other upside is the show will be shorter this year. At least if I don't talk very slowly, but I won't. So why don't we go ahead and get it started the way we usually do by introducing the administrator of the Eisner Awards who has now been in that position for 30 years. Let's give it up for Jackie Estrada. Thank you, Phil. Now, uh, you're probably familiar with Phil Lamar. He's a voice actor. Among the many characters he's done is a Green Lantern on Justice League, Hermes Conrad on Futurama, the title characters of both uh, Samurai Jack and Static Shock. And he's been in a lot of TV shows and movies too. So he's been in Free Enterprise, Veep, uh, Get Shorty, Supergirl. And of course, who can forget him being shot in the face as Marvin in Pulp Fiction. So we really appreciate you stepping up to host this year, Phil. Well, needless to say, it's been a challenging year to try to do the Eisner Awards because normally the judges all come to San Diego. Uh, they have a room filled with all the nominations and they can uh, go look at any book at any time, uh, talk about them. That didn't happen this year. So the judges, uh, I want to say who they are now because they spent pretty much eight months coming up with the nominations that you're going to see tonight. Those judges are uh, graphic novel reviewer Martha Cornog from Philadelphia, comics journalist Jamie Coville, who's in Kingston, Ontario, Canada, academic and author Michael Dooley, located in Pasadena, comics writer and novelist Alex Grecian, he lives in Topeka, Kansas local San Diego Comic-Con volunteer, Simon Jimenez, and retailer, Laura O'Meara. She's the co-owner of Casablanca Comics in Portland, Maine. So the judging had to take place via conversations in emails and Zoom. Packages had to be sent all over the country with the books in them. Fortunately, we were helped out by Comixology and many of the publishers who made their titles available uh, digitally for the judges to be able to look at in order to come up with their nominations for this year. The process took a couple months longer than usual, but now the fruits of their labors are going to be presented to you tonight in this virtual ceremony. As you sit comfortably at home watching the nominees appear on the screen in each of the categories, I encourage you to make some notes about the titles that look interesting to you. There's a reason that each of these works was nominated. They represent the best of what's being done in our beloved medium. There's an incredible variety of comics and graphic novels and digital works being done today and 
the nominees run from archival works that go back to the 1800s up to cutting edge works being done today. And Will Eisner was always vocal about the fact that he thought comics were a medium with endless possibilities. And it's wonderful that so many people are exploring those possibilities today. Something really interesting about this year's awards is that there are so many international nominees and that would have really pleased Will. When we were working on coming up with a design for the Eisner Trophy, um, Will was adamant that the trophy would not be a bust of him, that it not be the spirit character. He wanted something that was more universally meet, uh, meaningful. So when this design came up for a globe that has little squares on it that represent panels, well, that to him was the perfect type of award to be giving out to the Eisner Awards recipients. Now, all of this year's recipients will still get their trophies. It's just, uh, they're not gonna get them right now. <laughs> but who's gonna get those? Well, we're gonna find out soon because Phil is gonna start announcing the nominations and this year's Eisner Award recipients. Thank you, Jackie. Now, let's get to the good part, giving out the hardware. Now, our first category is best short story. Now, this is for stories that appear within a larger publication, such as an anthology or a short story collection, or for short stories that are printed on, that appear online. And the nominees are Hot Comb by Ebony Flowers, How to Draw a Horse by Emma Hunsinger, The Menopause by Mira Jacob, Who Gets Called an Unfit Mother by Miriam Lebicki, and You're Not Going to Believe What I'm About to Tell You by Matthew Inman. And the Eisner Award goes to Hot Comb by Ebony Flowers. Congratulations. Now our next category is Best Single Issue Slash One Shot. Uh, four of the five nominees are from small presses and the fifth was a comic done for free comic book day. The nominees are Coin Op Number Eight, Infatuation by Peter and Maria Hoey. The Freak by Matt Lesniewski. Minotaur by Lissa Tryman. Our Favorite Thing Is, My Favorite Thing Is Monsters by Emil Ferris. And Sobek by James Stokoe. And the award goes to Our Favorite Thing Is My Favorite Thing Is Monsters by Emil Ferris. Congratulations. Our next category is Best Anthology. And the nominees are ABC of Typography by David Raoul, Baltic Comics Anthology, edited by David Schilter and others, Drawing Power, Women's Stories of Sexual Violence, Harassment, and Survival, edited by Diane Newman, Kramer's Ergot, edited by Sammy Arkham, and The Nib, edited by Matt Bors. And the Eisner goes to Drawing Power, edited by Diane Newman. Congratulations. For both of the next uh, categories, which are international categories, the works must have been published in English and been available in the United States during 2019. Remember 2019? Seems so long ago. So the nominees for best US edition of international material are Diabolical Summer by Thierry Smolderan and Alexandre Clarisse. Gramercy Park by Timothée de Fombelle and Christian Caillot. The House 
by Paco Roca. Maggie Garrison by Luis Trondim and Stefan Wari. Stay by Luis Trondim and Hubert Chaviard. And Wrath of Fantomas by Olivier Bouquet and Julie Rochelot. And the Eisner goes to The House. Congratulations. Next category is Best U.S. Edition of International Material, Asia. And the nominees are Beast Stars by Paru Itagaki, Cats of the Louvre by Tayo Matsumoto, Grass by Kim Suk Jandri Kim, Magic Knight Ray Earth 25th Anniversary Edition by Clamp, The Poe Clan by Moto Hajio, and Witch Hat Atelier by Kamomi Shirahama. And the Eisner goes to both Cats of the Louvre and to Witch Hat Atelier. Congratulations to you both. It's a tie. Wow, it's like watching soccer. Okay, our next group of categories are those for individual creators. This is gonna be exciting. First up, best writer. This is for writers who do not draw their own stories. And the nominees are Bobby Kernow, M.K. Reed and Greg Means, Mariko Tamaki, Luis Trondheim, G. Willow Wilson, and Chip Sadarsky. And the Eisner goes to Mariko Tamaki. Congratulations. Next up, we have Best Writer Artist. Now, these are writers who also draw. So jealous. The nominees are Nina Bunjevak, Mira Jacob, Kim Suk Jandri Kim, James Stokoe, Raina Telgemeier, and Tilly Walden. And the Eisner goes to Raina Telgemeier. Congrats. Now, next up, we have Best Penciler Inker or Penciler Inker Team. So, it's not the number of hands that are involved, just the talent. The nominees are Ian Bertram, Colleen Doran, Bilkis Evely, Simon Gain, Steve Pugh, and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. And the Eisner goes to Rosemary Valero O'Connell. Congratulations. Next up, we have Best Painter Slash Digital Artist. Now this category is for interior artwork, but does not include cover art. And the nominees are Didier Casagrand, Alexandre Clarisse, David Mack, Leah Mazet, Julie Rochelot, and Christian Ward. And the award goes to Christian Ward. Congratulations. Our next category is Best Cover Artist. And this category is for artists who produced multiple covers during the year. You can't have just spent all year on one cover. That would really be fair, would it? The nominees are Jen Bartel, Francesco Francavia, 
David Mack, Emma Rios, Julian Totino Tedesco, and Christian Ward. And the Eisner goes to Emma Rios. Congratulations, Emma. Now, our next group of categories are for coloring, lettering, design, and digital comics and web comics. All of the stuff that doesn't get, you know, the attention it should. Until tonight. All right, our first category is best coloring. The nominees are Lorena Alvarez, Jean-Francois Beaulieu, Matt Hollingsworth, Molly Mendoza, and Dave Stewart. And the Eisner goes to Dave Stewart. Congratulations. Next category is best lettering. Thank you. You are the people who taught me how to read. The nominees are Darren Bennett, Jim Campbell, Clayton Coles, Emily Plateau, the Plateau, sorry, Stan Sakai, and Tilly Walden. And the Eisner goes to Stan Sakai. Congratulations. All right, next up, we have Best Publication Design. And the nominees are for Grunt, The Art and Unpublished Comics of James Stokoe, designed by Ethan Kimberling. Crazy Cat, The Complete Color Sundays, designed by Anatina Kessler. Logo A Go Go, designed by Ryan Hughes. Madness in Crowds, The Teeming Mind of Harrison Cady, designed by Paul Koppel and Alex Bruce. Making Comics, designed by Linda Berry. And Rusty Brown, designed by Chris Ware. And the Eisner goes to Making Comics, designed by Linda Berry. Congratulations. Okay, our next category is Best Digital Comic. And this category is solely for works that appear online in a comic book format. And the nominees are Afterlift by Chip Sidarsky and Jason Liu. Blackwater Lilies by Michel Boussy, adapted by Frédéric Duval and Didier Cassegrain. Colored, The Unsung Life of Claudette Covin by Tania de Montagne, adapted by Emily Plateau. Elma, A Bear's Life, Volume 1, The Great Journey, by Ingrid Chabert and Lea Mazé. Mare Internum, by Dershing Helmer. And Tales from Behind the Window, by Edinor Kuntman. And the award goes to... Afterlift. Congratulations. Next category is best web comic. Now this is for long form comics, long form comics that are created for viewing online that are often serialized and can have a variety of formats. So the nominees for best web comic are Cabra Mata by Matt Hewn. Chuck Wagon at the End of the World by Eric Lundy. The Eyes by Jave de Castro. Fried Rice Comic by Her Erica Eng. Remind by Jason Brubaker. And 
Third Shift Society by Meredith Moriarty. And the Eisner goes to Fried Rice Comic. Congratulations. All right. Our next categories include some of our younger readers. You know, like studio heads and stuff like that. All right. Next category is best publication for early readers. These are books intended for children up to age eight. The nominees are Comics, Easy as ABC by Ivan Brunetti. Kitten Construction Company, A Bridge to Fur by John Patrick Green. The Pigeon Has to Go to School by Mo Willems. A Trip to the Top of the Volcano with Mouse by Frank Viva. Vamos, Let's Go to the Market by Raul III. And Who Wet My Pants by Bob Shea and Zachariah O'Hara. And the Eisner goes to Comics, Easy as ABC. Congratulations. Next up, Best Publication for Kids. Now, for our purposes, kids are children from ages 9 to 12. Ooh, got to aim for that bullseye. The nominees are A Kissy. More Tales of Mischief by Marguerite Aboué and Mathieu Sapin. Dogman, For Whom the Ball Rolls by Dave Pilkey. Guts by Raina Telgemeier. New Kid by Jerry Craft. This Was Our Pact by Ryan Andrews. And The Wolf in Underpants by Wilfred Lupano, Mayana Itoiz, and Paul Coe. And the Eisner goes to, oh. Guts. Congratulations. And don't worry, you guys will be getting ones from 2020, not from 2010. Next up, best publication for teens. That's works intended for readers from ages 13 to 17. The nominees are Harley Quinn, Breaking Glass by Mariko Tamaki and Steve Pugh. Hot Comb by Ebony Flowers. Kiss Number Eight by Colleen A.F. Venable and Ellen T. Crenshaw. Lauren Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell and Penny Nichols by M.K. Reed, Greg Means, and Matt Weigel. And the Eisner goes to Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Congrats. Next category is Best Humor publication. Now this can include previously published items such as comic strip collections and can range from anywhere from single issues to archival works. So it's a big category. It's basically whatever makes us laugh. The nominees are Anatomy of Authors by Dave Kellett. Death Wins a Goldfish by Brian Ray. Minotaur by Lisa Tryman. Sobek by James Stokoe. The Way of the House Husband by Kosuke Uno. And Wondermark, Friends You Can Ride On by David Malky. And the Eisner goes to The Way of the House Husband. Congrats. The next category is Best Adaptation from Another Medium. Now that includes works that adapt novels, TV shows, movies, plays, or any other work that originally appeared in another medium. 
The nominees are Giraffes on Horseback Salad, Salvador Dali, The Marx Brothers, and The Strangest Movie Never Made by Josh Frank, Tim Heidecker, and Manuela Pertega. The Giver by Lois Lowry, adapted by P. Craig Russell. The Handmaid's Tale, the graphic novel by Margaret Atwood, adapted by Renee No. H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, adapted by Go Tanabe. The Seventh Voyage by Stanislaw Lem, adapted by John J. Muth. And Snow, Glass, Apples by Neil Gaiman and Colleen Duran. And the Eisner goes to Snow, Glass, Apples. Congratulations, Neil and Glenn. All right. Now we move on to the categories for archival works, journalism, comics related book, and scholarly works. You know, the smart stuff. Uh, note, to be eligible for the archival categories, the original work must be at least 20 years old, which will not be a problem. In the, in the comic strip category, some of these works go back to the mid 1800s. So there you go. All right, first up, best archival collection slash project, strips. Nominees are Cam, the best comic strips and graphic novelettes by David Kunzel. Ed Leffingwell's Little Joe by Harold Gray. The George Harriman Library, Crazy and Ignatz, 1916 to 1918. Crazy Cat, The Complete Color Sundays by George Harriman. Madness in Crowds, The Teeming Mind of Harrison Cady by Violet and Dennis Kitchen. And Pogo Volume 6, Clean as a Weasel by Walt Kelly. And the Eisner goes to Crazy Cat, The Complete Color Sundays. Next up, we have Best Archival Collection slash Project, Comic Books. The nominees are Alley Oop by William Gropper, The Complete Cripax, American Stories, Jack Kirby's Dingbat Love, Moonshadow, The Definitive Edition, Stan Sakai's Yusagi Yojimbo, The Complete Grass Cutter Artist Select, and that Miyoko Asagawa feeling by Shinichi Abe. And the award goes to Yusagi Yojimbo, The Complete Grass Cutter. Now our next category is Beck's best comics related periodical slash journalism. Now both print periodicals and online sites are eligible here. The nominees are Comic Riffs Blog by Michael Kavna with David Betancourt. The Comics Journal, edited by Gary Groth, RJ Casey, and Christy Valenti. Hogan's Alley, edited by Tom Hentges. Inks, the Journal of the Comics Studies Society, edited by Kiana Witted. Lab Magazine, Volume 4, This Was Your Life, edited by Ronald Wiberly and Josh O'Neill. And Women Write About Comics, edited by Nola Fow and Wendy Brown. Why is the word edited so hard to say? In any case, the Eisner goes to Women Write About Comics. Congratulations. Next up, we have the nominees for Best Comics Related Book. Now, these are nonfiction books about all aspects of comics. Nominees are The Art of Nothing, 25 Years of Mutts, and The Art of Patrick McDonnell. The Book of Weirdo by John B. Cook. Grunt, The Art and Unpublished Comics of James Stokoe. Logo A Go Go, 
Branding Pop Culture by Ryan Hughes. Making Comics by Linda Berry. And Screwball, the cartoonist who made the funnies funny by Paul Toomey. And we're gonna give the Eisner to Linda Berry for Making Comics. All right, our next award is for Best Academic Slash Scholarly Work. The nominees are The Art of Per Jones, Space, Landscape, and Comics Form by Benjamin, Fra by Benjamin Fraser. The Comics of Rutu Modan, War, Love, and Secrets by Kevin Hayworth. EC Comics, Race, Shock, and Social Protest by Kiana Witted. The Peanuts Papers, edited by Andrew Blauner. Producing Mass Entertainment, The Serial Life of the Yellow Kid by Christina Meyer. And Women's Manga in Asia and Beyond, edited by Fusami Ogi and others. And the Eisner goes to EC Comics, Race, Shock, and Social Protest. All right. That's enough of that smart book stuff. Let's get back to the funny books. All right, our next category is best new series. Now just noted to qualify, at least two issues of the comic book series must have been published in 2019. Our nominees are Dr. Doom by Christopher Cantwell and Salvador La Roca. Invisible Kingdom by G. Willow Wilson and Christian Ward. Once and Future by Kieran Gillen and Dan Mora. Something is Killing the Children by James Tinian IV and Werther Deladera. And Undiscovered Country by Scott Snyder, Charles Soule, Giuseppe Comancoli, and Danielle Orlandini. The award goes to Invisible Kingdom. Congrats. All right, our next category is Best Limited Series. The nominees are Ascender by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Wynn. Ghost Tree by Bobby Curno and Simon Gain. Little Bird by Darcy Van Polgeest and Ian Bertram. Naomi by Brian Michael Bendis, David Walker, and Jamal Campbell. And Sentient by Jeff Lemire and Gabriel Walta. And the Eisner goes to Little Bird. Congratulations. All right, our next category is best continuing series. We got those new kids out of the way. Let's go to the ongoing, I won't say old kids, we know what you mean. Okay, the nominees are Bitter Root by David Walker, Chuck Brown, and Sanford Green. Criminal by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Crowded by Christopher Sabella, Rose Stein, and Ted Brandt. Daredevil by Chip Sadarsky and Marco Cicchetto. The Dreaming by Simon Spurrier, Bilkis Evley, and others. And Immortal Hulk by Al Ewing, Joe Bennett, and others. And the Eisner goes to Bitter Root. Congratulations. All right, next up we have best reality-based work. Now mind you, these are not comics based on reality shows, but on actual real reality. All right, and our nominees are Good Talk, a memoir in conversations by Mira Jacob. Grass by Kem Suk Gondry Kim. 
Kid Gloves, Nine Months of Careful Chaos by Lucy Nisley. Moonbound, Apollo 11 and the Dream of Spaceflight by Jonathan Fettervorm. My Solo Exchange Diary, Volume 2 by Nagata Kabi. And They Called Us Enemy by George Takei, Justin Isinger, Stephen Scott, and Harmony Becker. And the Eisner goes to, they called us enemy. Congratulations. Now we're on to best graphic album reprint. Now this category is for books that collect material that was originally published within the last 20 years. Our nominees are Bad Weekend by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. Clyde Fans by Seth. Cover, Volume One by Brian Michael Bendis and David Mack. Glenn Ganges, The River at Night by Kevin Heisenga. LaGuardia by Nettie Okafor and Tana Ford and Rusty Brown by Chris Ware. And the Eisner goes to LaGuardia. Congrats. Next, we have Best Graphic Album, New. Now this is for works normally referred to as graphic novels, but can also be short stories by one person the work has to have been at least 50% new in 2019. Is that clear? Good. The nominees for Best Graphic Album New are Are You Listening? by Tilly Walden. Bezamina by Nina Bunjavak. BTTM FDRS by Ezra Clayton Daniels and Ben Passmore. Life on the Moon by Robert Grossman. New World by David Jesus Vignoli. And Reincarnation Stories by Kim Deitch. The Eisner goes to Are You Listening? Congratulations to Are You Listening and to all of our Eisner Award winners tonight. You guys have done incredible work and so happy to be here to be part of acknowledging that. Now, before we close out the Eisner Awards with Sergio Aragones announcing this year's recipients for the Hall of Fame, I would like to take this moment right now to introduce Ruth Clampett. Ruth is the daughter of the great animator Bob Clampett, and she we will be presenting this year's Bob Clampett Humanitarian Awards. Ruth? Hi everyone, I'm Ruth Clampett coming to you from Clampett Studio Collections, where we publish the fine art of Warner Brothers, including DC Comics, Harry Potter, Looney Tunes, and Hanna-Barbera. It's such an honor for myself and our family to present the Bob Clampett Humanitarian Award every year to such deserving people. Dad loved Comic-Con so much and found great joy in meeting animators and artists to hear about their work and encourage them to keep creating. All the recipients this year have provided economic relief to comic creators and retailers impacted by COVID-19. So I'm happy to share with you our first recipient. For the last 20 years, the HERO Initiative has given grants directly to comic book writers, inkers, pencilers, colorists, and letters in financial need. The charity has a board of experienced medical and financial advisors to help guide comic professionals and industry veterans. They've helped countless creatives get through rough times. Our next two recipients are Good Samaritans that have stepped up to help retailers as well. Creators for Comics uses Twitter to raise money for struggling comic book stores. 
by auctioning off items, services, or experiences via tweets, the organization generates revenue that goes to retailers in need of aid. Also using online auctions to aid stores is the Comic Book United Fund, which is backed by DC Comics and Oni Lion Forge Publishing. The Comic Book United Fund is run by the Book Industry Charitable Foundation, which has awarded $7 million to 7,800 families in need throughout the book publishing industry. The help that these organizations give is a genuine lifeline in helping creators and retailers outlast this unprecedented economic shutdown. We are all so grateful. Thank you. Hello, my friends. I'm Sergio Lagones, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here every year. I wish I could see you in person. And the reason is that from the beginning, I was next to Will Eisner, which is a man that I admire. And one of the reasons probably that I'm doing comics because of his, his input and, and me reading his cartoons since I was a, a little kid. Also, we're going to miss a beautiful Kerr Morrison giving the words, but uh, circumstances. So let me read for you. I'm delighted to be able to announce the 2020 inductees of the Eisner Hall of Fame Award. Each year, the Eisner judges pick two people to be automatic choices for the Hall of Fame. The first person they picked this year is Neil Brinkley. Neil Brinkley was an American illustrator and comics artist who was sometimes referred as the queen of comics. During her early four decade career, working with New York newspapers and magazines. Her comics are a luxuriously rendered visual chronic of women's progress over the decades. From her Victorian era heroines to her deco style independent working women. Her iconic Brinkley Girl, celebrated in song and on stage, surpassed the Gibson Girl in popularity. Her creative legacy can be seen everywhere in comics from Dale Messick, Ramona Fladan, Mary Severin, and Trina Robbins. The judge's second choice was E. Sims Campbell. E. Sims Campbell was an indispensable part of Square magazine birth in the early 30s. He established his visual style and invented the original Esky. It's a mascot for Squire. And in the words of his founding editor, Arnold Gingrich, his full page color cartoons catapulted the magazine circulation from the start. Campbell may also be the first African-American illustrator, not only to break the color line in mass market publications, but to earn widespread public acclaim as well. During his art career, Campbell produced cartoons for a variety of magazines, such as Life, Cosmopolitan, and nearly every issue of Esquire until the early 60s, when he moved over to Playboy. The judges also nominated 14 people for the Hall of Fame who were voted by the professionals in the comic industry. The nominees for the Hall of Fame are Alison Bechdel, Howard Cruz, Moto Hagio, Don Heck, Jeffrey Catherine Jones, Francois Mouly, Keiji Nakazawa, Thomas Nast, Lily Renee Peters Phillips, Stan Sakai, Louis Simonson, Donald Maggie Thompson, James Warren, and Bill Watterson. The voters selected six people to be inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. The first inductee is Alison McDell. Thank you. This is insane and a massive honor, and I'm hugely grateful. Um, 
As someone who spent a lot of time in the margins of the comics world, it's quite a sensation to be welcomed into the fold in this way. Back in the dark ages of the 1980s, when I was writing an episode of my comic strip Dykes to Watch Out For about two characters trying to find a movie they could see that had at least two women in it who talked to each other about something besides a man, back then I would not have believed it if you told me that one day I would be inducted into the Eisner Hall of Fame. I spent about as much time in comic book shops in those days as I did in men's locker rooms. Uh, so this is pretty cool. I feel very fortunate to have lived through this kind of change in the comics world, to see women and people of color and LGBTQ creators getting recognition and encouragement and to, to feel like they belong here. Um, this is an amazing kind of progress and it's good for all of us. And I'm very proud to be a part of this community. Thank you. The second inductee is Howard Cruz. Accepting the award on Howard's behalf is his partner, Ed Sederbaum. Howard would have been so honored by this recognition from his peers, and I'm honored to accept it on his behalf. I always knew Howard celebrated the growth and achievements of his fellow cartoonists. I saw that in his nurturing the editorship of the gay comic series that he launched with Dennis Kitchen. But I learned only after Howard's death from the cards and emails that came to me that he had been a mentor to so many developing artists over the years. You don't know me, the notes often began, but 25 years ago I wrote to your husband for advice on a comic I was writing. Apparently Howard enjoyed mentoring artists and getting to know artists and learning from those artists because he continued many of those relationships through the years. This did not surprise me. There are some milestones ahead for Howard that he knew he might not get to witness. This week's publication of Struck Over Baby's 25th anniversary edition, the premiere of Vivian Kleeman's film No Straight Lines, The Rise of Queer Comics, but he did not know he would be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Cartooning and the queer community were Howard's lifeblood. For his body of work and his influence to be recognized by his peers would have thrilled him and humbled him, and he would have said, as I do, thank you for this honor affirming the value of his artistic life. The third inductee is Stan Sakai. Hi, this is Stan Sakai. Now, Will Eisner is a standard for sequential storytelling. So it's a huge honor for me to be inducted into the Eisner Hall of Fame. I have to thank my friends and family, and especially the readers who have supported me throughout all these years. Thank you very much. The fourth inductee is Louis Simonson. You don't get nominated for the Eisner Hall of Fame without having teamed up with great people. I want to thank my terrific bosses like Jim Warren, Jim Shooter, and Mike Carlin, who offered me amazing opportunities. Brilliant writers like Chris Claremont and smart editors like, like Carl Potts and Larry Hama, who taught me so much. Great production staff, letterers, colorists, and business folks too, too numerous to name. And especially wonderful artists like June Brigman, John Bogdanov, and Brett Blevins, who transformed my words into such compelling pictures. Thanks too to the comic shops and to the readers who I hope enjoyed my stories. A special thanks, of course, goes to my husband and sometimes collaborator, the multi-talented Walter Simonson, for his good advice and help in all things, including as cinematographer for this segment. Love you, darling. The fifth in the T are Don and Maggie Thompson. It is an honor and a privilege and a thrill to receive this award. With so many challenges in the world today, it takes an extra effort to celebrate our history. Thank you. Six decades ago, when Don Thompson and I were dating, the term popular culture was not in wide use. Nevertheless, pop culture is what brought us together. It fascinated us. It challenged us to learn and share at a time when comic art was usually dismissed as childish entertainment. When we began producing fanzines, we didn't call ourselves critics. We called ourselves reviewers. We didn't call ourselves journalists. We called ourselves editors and reporters and writers. When we were hired to edit Comics Buyer's Guide, our job was to provide a 
growing audience of comics fans, collectors, and professionals with a newspaper that served the needs of that audience. And that's what we did. I know Don would be so proud of and grateful for this honor. It means the world to me to see his memory celebrated 26 years after his death. I hope that we will all continue to support each other just as Don and I shared our comics with our children, Valerie and Stephen. Let's keep spreading the news of and sharing the love for this art form. The world benefits so much from what used to be dismissed as kids stuff. It needs to know that. And while never forgetting the kids, we can all continue to benefit from comics, no matter what our age may be. Thank you again. Thank you. The six in the tea is Bill Watterson. I will accept that word on Bill's behalf. Congratulations to all of the 2020 inductees to the Will Eisner Hall of Fame. Thank you, Sergio. Always a joy to see you and your mustache. And congratulations to all of this year's Hall of Fame inductees. It's an honor to be in your digital presence. Okay, so compared to the regular Eisners, this has been kind of a whirlwind. I mean, we covered 32 Eisner Awards, as well as the Clampett Awards and the Hall of Fame. Oh my gosh. Um, just as a, a point of business, tonight's winners will be sent their own, not blank, uh, Eisner Award trophies. Whee! Um, to display on their shelves. And uh, to wrap things up tonight, why don't we go back to the lovely, Jackie Estrada to close out our evening. Jackie. Thank you, Phil. I couldn't have asked for a better host for the show. And I also wanna make sure to thank Ruth Clampett and Sir Jared Gonas for doing their part to acknowledge deserving award recipients this year. If any luck, next year we'll be back to having a gala ceremony and you'll be able to attend it if you're in San Diego and see the recipients get up on stage and get their physical awards and see all the celebrity presenters in person. As always, I encourage you to use the nominated works as a shopping list. Now, if you've got a local comic shop, go support your shop. But otherwise, if you are uh, going online, whatever you're doing to seek out these titles, you are supporting comics publishers, you're supporting comics creators, and they really need that right now. I want to thank a few people for putting together this evening's presentation. Uh, special thanks to Daniel uh, Titteman and Davey uh, Pataxel for putting together the presentation and Gary Sassman for coordinating it. I also want to give special thanks to Ron McPhee, who was my assistant who really helped me out with uh, judging materials. Of course, a uh, big thanks has to go to Comic-Con International Board of Directors and staff for supporting the awards this year in these difficult times. So congratulations to all the winners. The after party starts now in your living room and thank you everyone for viewing.